Galina and I had the opportunity to travel to Moscow over the break. And what was fun about it is we took our granddaughter and she met her great grandfather for the first time face to face. And that was a joyous occasion. I made sure I had my camera ready, got captured that moment, because I know that's going to matter to both of them, but especially to Ksenia, and she gets older, realizes, wow, oh, my great grandfather. It's a great joy. Um, when the family has a new member comes into the family. My parents, while we were in Moscow, they went to visit my sister in the United States and they met for the first time in person two of their great grandchildren for the first time. It was number eight and number nine and a tenth on the way. So, my family is very active in the States. <laughs> Lots of children being born, but it's, there's something exciting about a new member coming into the family. And, and there's a celebration that goes with that when, when we see a new member coming in. And, and the joy, most of the time, joy that comes with, with a newborn child into the family. So new birth, new life. This is what we want to talk about today in relationship to a subject called baptism. Baptism, a new life. And we want to talk about that baptism is like the same type of thing. It's a celebration because it is a new life coming into to be in the church when a person makes a decision to follow Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus, to, to give their life to being a follower of him. That is that process and then being baptized is going from death unto life going from an old way of living unto a whole new way of life. And so that is something that we celebrate. There's two things that Jesus commands his church to do. Two sacraments, we call them. One is the communion. We celebrate every month. We remember what Jesus did for us on the cross with the cup and the, the bread. And so that's something that we do. We celebrate that, we remember that every month. But the second requirement and commandment is baptism, to be baptized. And so what I'd like to do as we, as we begin this new year, this is really a good time to remember about baptism. For those of us who have become disciples and followers of Jesus and have been baptized, then this will be a reminder of what God has done for us in Christ and the life that we are now to live in Christ because we have repented and been baptized. But there are, there's a number of you, and this was true in my life years ago, where I repented, I said yes to be a follower of Jesus, but I wasn't baptized until many, many years later. And so the, 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 dip, the time between making a decision for Jesus and the time that I got baptized, there was a big gap in between. So I want to speak to those of you who are following Jesus but have never been baptized. I want to encourage you to consider doing that as part of the fulfillment of the commandment of Jesus. And then, of course, there's the third group of people, and those would be people who have yet to make a decision about Jesus, whether you want to be a follower or not. But I, we want, I want you to understand, this is what you're heading into if you make this decision. This is what um, happens to you when you turn to Christ. You go through a process. This baptism is not just uh, some type of religious uh, ceremony. There is something substantial that changes in our lives as a result of being baptized. And so 
Um, this is, we want you to know what, this is a part of your decision to be a follower of Jesus. Okay, and so what we are hoping for from this is that we will have a baptism service sometime in the spring. And those of you that want to, to be baptized can be baptized at that time. We have a, there's a, well, first of all, I'll explain what it is, but the, there's a, a little tank back there holds the water, and we have our baptism right here in this room. So, all right. So that's that's what we're that's what we're doing here. First of all, I want to define define what does this word mean? Baptism. The Greek word baptizo. It's pretty close. Uh, means to be immersed into. It means to be dip down into something. And it could be a piece of cloth, for example, being immersed into a color dye. And it, be, it really takes on, and be, and takes on that color because uh, you've immersed it into uh, that thing. And, the, and what we're talking about in Christian baptism is a person, is we baptize a person in the water. They go down into the water, and then they pop back up again. All right? <laughs> it's, it, we, we, we encourage you to come back up. So um, uh, anyway, so that's what baptism is. is. It's just that act. It's a really rather simple act. But the question is, what, what's going on here? Why are we doing this? Um, and so first of all, I want to answer the question, why? And then we'll talk about what... What does it, in fact, mean? What's happening in baptism? I'll let you digest that a moment. Okay, and now the first thing is we do it because it is a commandment of Jesus, a direct command. If we go to Matthew, this is a familiar passage to many of us. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, his, his disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So there it is, a very specific, concrete command. Go, make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Okay, there's a very clear mandate of what it are, is that we are called to do. So it's a, it's a command of Jesus. So when we go, which is what we're supposed to do. We are to go. When we go and we share the good news about Jesus, that through Jesus we can have a reconciled relationship with God, that our sins can be forgiven, that we can have a restored and renewed and completely new life. This is his promise to us. Then that person says, yes, I want that. I repent. I receive this good gift. They've made a decision to follow Jesus because it requires an active decision, an act of the will. When that happens, they are to be baptized. Um, I'll give you an example. In the New Testament, um, it is the Apostle Peter, this is the first time it happens in the New Testament uh, in terms of when the coming of the Holy Spirit. So let's, let's turn and I'll read it to you. Peter is one of the disciples. So he heard that command from Jesus. Then he turns and he goes and he proclaims the message. He's, he has shared this message about the good news about Jesus. The crowd heard and let's look at their response. Now when they, the crowd, heard this message, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you 
Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So then those who had received his word were baptized. Then that day there were added about 3,000 people. So they heard the message. They were convicted by the message because they understood, oh, I've got a broken relationship with God. I need to get right with God. I need forgiveness of my sins. And that's offered through Jesus by his work on the cross. They received that message. And they were immediately baptized. Repent and be baptized. Now, repentance, we've used this, explained this word many times, but I'll just say it again. I never tire of words, but the, the word repent means to turn around. I'm going in the, this direction. I realize I'm going in the wrong direction. Have you ever had that experience? You think you're going in the right direction? All of a sudden you go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This is not the right way. So you repent. You turn around, you go back. Right? You change your mind. And the matter of fact, I do not know where I am. I do not know where it, the way is. And so I turn around and I come back. That's repentance. But it's even more profound when it comes to making a decision to follow Jesus. Because what we're saying is, the way I'm living my life, the direction that I'm going in, is not right. I am not right with God. I'm in the wrong place. I'm thinking about life wrong. I'm thinking about God wrong. I'm thinking about myself wrong. I'm turning around. Jesus is offering to me a completely different way of life. So I'm going to leave that behind then and come and embrace this new life. So there are examples after examples. And it was, I discovered something along the way. I love when I find things. But um, the first time there was a repent and be baptized was this account here. Who was uh, baptized? Jews, primarily. It was all Jewish, actually. The second time that there is a clear connection between uh, people being baptized were Samaritans. They're half Jewish. They're half Jew and Assyrian. You know, they're mixed race. They're the next group in Acts chapter 8. I think I have, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, Samaritans in Acts chapter 8. They repent, they're baptized. Then there's this Ethiopian eunuch. He's an African guy who is trying to figure out a passage of the scripture and somebody explains it to him and at the end of the discussion he says well I need to be baptized and so he is fourth time it's a Gentile Cornelius in chapter 10 of Acts the first Gentile so you have a very interesting progression but what we what Luke I believe wants us to see is that everyone goes through the same process you repent, believing in the message of Jesus, and you are baptized immediately after. There's no distinctions between a Jew or a Samaritan or an African or an Indian or an American or anyone else. We all, it doesn't matter your race, your background, your color, any of that. Everybody is, comes in the same way. We hear the same message. We have the same response. We go through the same baptism. Everybody comes in the same door, so to speak. There's no multiple ways in. This is the way in. No differences, no distinctions. And I love that. I, just, I love that because that's so central to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every tongue and tribe and nation, every person, unique, Everyone made in the image and likeness of God. God is calling out to everyone on this planet. And so that's what's available to us. Now somewhere, somehow, in church history, this repentance decision and baptism started drifting apart. I think if I did a, a survey of you in this group, 
had asked you how many of you were, you know, repented and believed in Jesus and then had a pretty significant time lapse between that event and when you were baptized. There's probably many of you that had a significant period of time. When I got baptized, I was 18 years old. I know that I became a believer in Jesus when I was seven or eight years old. And so there was a 10 year gap. I got baptized with my brother, who's two years older, my sister, four years older, and my mom. We all got baptized on the same day. It was very cool. I mean, I, but my mom had been walking with Jesus for decades at that point. So it's like, so wh why this gap? These things have drifted apart from each other, but they really are meant to be together. Repent and be baptized. And, and the reason for this is, and, and let me just make one point about this. This tells me something about the message. When we're sharing the good news about Jesus, a person should understand, I need to make a decision for Jesus. And I need to be baptized. I need to understand what is baptism. I need to understand I need to do that. And I need to do it now. Now most of the time we hear about Jesus, we don't hear about that. But once we understand what, what baptism represents, what it's symbolic of, it, it's just not right that these two things are not being held together. We must understand what is going on when we put our faith in Jesus. It's huge. Uh, that's what will bring us back to our passage that Joel read for us in Romans. Listen to how it starts. Do you not know? Oh, guess what? We're supposed to know something. In verse 6 it says, knowing this. Okay, so somewhere between verse 3 and verse 6, there's something we're supposed to know. I'm always looking for stuff like this. Oh, I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to know? <laughs> well, let's find out. Do you not know that all of us who were baptized, now remember, it means immersion, into Christ Jesus, we've been immersed into Christ Jesus, have been baptized or immersed into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was then raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. In other words, we too are, are in, in Christ being raised from the dead with him. For if we have become united, and I'm going to revisit this word too. Some of you already know this word. That's good. It's a good word. If we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Friends, our life is to be lived from a place of resurrection power. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power that resides in us. And this is the enabling and empowering presence that God has given to us. But something has to happen before we receive that. What's that? We need to die. Now this is where things get you like, whoa, what's going on here? But you see, this is absolutely essential to understanding what it means to put our faith in Jesus. It means that something is going to come to an end in order that something will become to a beginning and to a new life. And that's exactly what happens. Our former existence, living life in our own strength, 
apart from God ends. That party is over. And we leave that behind. We die. Now, I used this example, but if we have a dead person lying here on the floor, we, we would not want that. Uh, but if we did, um, what can we tempt or test this person with? Now, I, I heard a lot of you talking about your Christmas break. I won't name names, but uh, there was a lot of food involved. Right? So I uh, was saying maybe we need to have the sin of uh, repentance of the sin of gluttony for all the food that was consumed during this past couple of weeks. But anyway, could we bring any of that food, wave it in front of this dead body? What's going to be the response? No response. Why? Because he's dead. Right? I, and whatever I want to try to put in front of this person, it's not going to invoke any kind of response. That, my dear friends, is what happens to us when we repent. We say, to my old way of life, to my old way of thinking, that's over. I do not respond to that anymore. Just as much as a dead person would not respond to anything you would try to wave in front of them. And when I do that, that and, and this is a, it, it is a mystery, because we are placed into Christ Jesus. He becomes our representative. He has our name written on his palm of his hand when he goes to the cross. When he died, we were placed in him and we died with him. It says clearly, we, uh, well it says clearly elsewhere that we have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives. Now, that life is over. Now, the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave up his life for me. Completely. So when a person, and this is why it really is incredible. This is, we need to understand this. Uh, this is what you're doing. This is what we did, some of us, when we made that decision. All of this is going on. And, and baptism, the act of going down in the water, that's, that's symbolic of dying with Christ. Buried, and then when we let the person come up out of the water, <laughs> we come out to a whole new life. Resurrection life. That's what's happening in baptism. We go from death to life. Baptism is a symbol of the ceremony, is a symbol of what happens to us when we place our faith in Jesus, the Son of God. We go from being dead, separated, life of sin, to alive, joined, fulfilled, and a, uh, and a fully alive in God. This is what we're supposed to know. Do you know this? Paul says, do you not know? <laughs> Whenever somebody asks a question to you like that, what's the first thing you go? I'm supposed to know this. Oh, I, just, I hate that one. Somebody, don't you know this? Uh, especially when I don't know. Well, now you know. Now you know. <laughs> Do you know? Yes. Okay, so then what? Knowing this, okay? Knowing this, that our old self, our life before Jesus, was crucified, which means made powerless in Christ, in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Friends, 
When we place our faith in Jesus, we are placed into Christ and we die with Him. The power of sin that we are enslaved to is broken in Jesus. And that body of sin, you just take it away. Bury the thing. That's what you do with dead bodies. You bury them. That life is over. That's finished. We go through the process and then we come up the other side. For he who has died, we are set free from sin. Friends, that is huge. There's no sin that we need to commit ever. There's no temptation that has overtaken us, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able, but with the temptation will always provide a way of escape that we may be able to endure it. Our relationship with sin changes dramatically from before we meet Jesus to after. Completely changed. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, and friends, Jesus has been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So consider. What, what, where do we, what operation needs to take place in order to consider something? Well, that goes back to, do you not know? Oh, yes, I know. Well, knowing this, then we need to consider. We need to think through. We need to believe in this. To be, and begin to live this way. Consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. What a great way to start the new year. To recognize the truth that we are dead to sin, to the old way of life, the old way of thinking, and we are all alive in Christ. We have a whole new life that is dead to sin and we can live in a way completely different than we did before. That comes, brings us back to that, that word that I love, that I, I cling to when he says, for if we have become united with Jesus in the likeness of his death, Certainly, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. This word united, do you remember what does it mean? It's a botanical term, right? This is when you take a branch that's hanging on a tree over here, and you go, <laughs> take that branch, and you bring it over to another tree, and you graft it, you unite it in the new tree. A branch is nothing unto itself. Take a branch, drop it on the ground, and nothing ha is dead. It has to be attached to something in order to produce fruit. Now in this tree, it's the old self. It's that old person that we've talked about. And the fruit is the slavery to sin and death. That's the fruit that is produced in that tree. But when we are united with Christ in his death, we die to our relationship to that, and we are taken by Jesus over into his tree, into himself. And he binds us up, and the life that is flowing up through that tree comes into that branch. And it's eternal life. It is life in the Spirit. It is love and joy and peace. The fruits of the Spirit begin to work its way in and through us because we are united with Christ. 
This is what happens to us in baptism. We go from being united to a dead tree going nowhere. We're taken through the waters. We come popping up out of the water and we're grafted in, in the new tree. And it's the tree of life of Jesus and his life begins to flow through us. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore Therefore those of you if anyone if anyone is in Christ they are a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold new things have come. That's it. There it is. We are a new creation. What happened in creation? Remember the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. It was chaos, emptiness. And God said, and it was so. And he created the heavens and the earth from this hovering over the waters representing chaos. And he produced cosmos. Chaos to cosmos. And we're part of that cosmos, that new life that he created. Now we come to the waters of baptism. The Holy Spirit is hovering over the waters of baptism. We go down a dead person and we come up alive in Christ. This is the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us, producing life out of death. Hallelujah. When this happens, my dear friends, we celebrate. This is cause for celebration because this person not only has a new life that they now live in, but they have a new family. They become brothers and sisters. And if you don't have any, we had a, a questionnaire some of us were filling out last night. And one of the things was that you've never had a brother or a sister. You're like an only child. And there was one person in the group, only child. But it was great to say, hey, welcome to the family. Here's your family. We are your brothers and sisters. It's not just words. It's reality. We are the children of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ. This is baptism. When we repent, be baptized. Because you need to see, that's, that's what happened to me. I went from death to life. I went from the old way unto a new way. I went from this tree to this tree. And his tree is called Jesus. And his life now flows in and through me. I make a public declaration that I am a follower of Jesus. I am united with him. I confess my faith in him. I make a commitment to Jesus and I am baptized. And people witness this and say yes. So, here's the call. If you have never done this and never made a decision for Jesus to repent, to turn around, to change your mind and become a follower of Jesus, you can do that. Invitation is open to you. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. When you do this, not only will your sins be forgiven, but the slavery that you are in to sin is broken and you'll be brought out into a new life enabled and empowered by the very presence of God living in you. Second group of people, if you have repented, you've done that, but you've never been baptized, then let's make that public proclamation. Let's get baptized. Let's celebrate what you have already done in Christ. We, we had that two years ago, November. We had a baptism, and there was four people that got baptized. They had all made the decision to follow Jesus sometime before. But they made that baptism on that particular evening. And it was a celebration. It was so much joy in this room when they were baptized. It was wonderful. We, were, we just long, we pray for this. As a leadership team, we just go, Lord, 
bring people into the kingdom so we can have some baptisms. We love this stuff. We love because we love to celebrate. Yeah. This is cause for celebration. And for those of you that remember, you repented and you have been baptized. Remember, what does that mean? You've gone from an old way of life unto a whole new way of life. And you have victory over sin. Because anything that you're struggling with, just, just declare, I am dead to sin. Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to Jesus Christ. A completely different life. Amen?